Okay, so now we're ready to start screening an EPU. So to begin a screening session, what we're going to do is navigate to the Atlas tab. And under Atlas, we're going to select new section, new session. And we'll just give it a date, 2307, we'll just call it test. And we're going to select a folder in which to store this under. So for us, uh, that would be my folder, the Lucas folder. And we're going to apply that. And what we'll be greeted with under the screening uh, tab here is the same uh, mirrored list from the autoloader uh, section in the TEM user interface over here. So whatever you fill out in this section will be copied over uh, to EPU. So we're going to come back and we're going to collect an atlas. Uh, so to do that, we will select uh, the grid we're interested in in atlasing. Uh, for us, we're just gonna start with four because I know it's good. And I'm going to press start. And what's going to happen is the microscope is going to load the grid and automatically collect uh, a series of atlas images and tile them together into a full image of the grid. So now I'm just going to pause and when that's done, I'll return and we can continue a screening. Okay, so our atlas is completed. Uh, the grid was loaded and then imaged. And what you'll notice is the first thing uh, EPU does is color code, color code all of these uh, squares. I usually just ignore those while I'm screening uh, and I'll turn those off. Uh, the second thing you'll notice about this grid in particular is that it's not very good. So uh, a lot of the squares are dry, but we're just going to ignore that for now because we're uh, screening. So what we're going to do is come to a grid square that we're interested in, uh, right click and say move stage here. And while that's going on, we're going to move back to the preparation tab and move to the grid square magnification. And this is where we're going to image our first grid square. So uh, once the movement, stage movement's done, we're going to select preview. It should happen any second. There we go. And then it'll take about one or two seconds for the magnification to change and for our image to appear. Okay. So now we're greeted with an image of our grid square and you can navigate anywhere on the grid square you want. Uh, another handy thing that you can do at this level is kind of screen for ice thickness. Uh, on this grid, because it's dry, you're not gonna see that much variability in the ice, but you can adjust this filter on the side and look for regions that have thinner or thicker ice. So right here, we have thick ice and in the center, we don't really have anything. Uh, so just keep that in mind when you're screening because sometimes that's a useful feature. Okay, so I'm just going to right click and move to the center of the grid square. And next I'm going to navigate to the whole use centric height magnification preset into the preparation or the, under the presets drop down menu. And I'll come to auto functions and then I'm going to select auto use centric by beam tilt and press start. And what's, it, what's going to happen is EPU is going to take a series of reference images and compare them to each other and look for a cross correlation peak in this window. Uh, sometimes it's useful to know how that works just because if you're looking at this and the cross correlation peak doesn't fall uh, neatly under the uh, cross right here, then you'll know something's wrong. Generally, this is a pretty robust uh, program though, and it works. Um, but it's good to know, like if you're getting weird data, uh, data mag images, uh, or, or weird images at the data collection magnification, then, uh, you know, maybe that's the problem. So, uh, now the auto use centric, uh, 
uh, function is finished successfully. So we can go and we're going to go to the preparation tab again uh, and preview at the whole use centric height magnification. And what we see is our uh, grid is covered in ice. And when I'm screening, I actually look for the holes that have junk in the center first because that, you know, kind of guarantees that there's ice in those. So I'm just going to right click and move stage to the center of a hole. And then I'm going to uh, go to the da data acquisition magnification and select preview. And that will give us an image of our particles. I think the exposure time for this is 12 seconds right now, so it'll take a second. And you can get information on the exposure time and dose uh, again in the uh, center up here. Okay. And we can see all of our particles. Uh, we have a little gold in our image, so I'm just going to navigate back to the center uh, and try and get a better image. Uh, one thing that you can do is adjust the filter on the side if you don't want to do that. So we can adjust here and move up and down until we get a nice crisp image. Uh, and it looks like our particles are maybe a little bit over concentrated. And because I'm just going to automatically take another image when I move the stage, I'm going to right click and say move stage here and acquire. So it will move the stage to this point and automatically acquire an image. Okay. And I ended up melting the uh, ice. Uh, that's what's causing the motion in this image. So if that happens, it's fine. Just come back to the whole use your kite mag and select another square. I'm gonna go for this one now because it has the junk in it. And hopefully it's a little better uh, centered this time. And if not, I'll just save the image as it is. So we'll preview one more time. And that ice melting is really common. Uh, it's just something to keep in mind as you're screening. Uh, when you image the same area too many times, uh, you'll start to melt the ice. So instead of melting the ice again, I'm just going to uh, adjust the filter on this image and then I'll save it when I'm happy. Okay. And to save an image, you just right click again and you'll say export image. Okay, and then we're going to navigate to the folder we want to save our data, which is the folder that we opened our atlas in earlier. And I like to use the formats uh, of my grid box name. Uh, so this is 10 3. And then uh, this is the first grid square screen. So it's grid square number one from the very first hole in that first grid square. And then this is the data acquisition magnification. And I'll save that. And then I'll return and look at all the image that I've saved in these buffers. And I'll export this image as well. And the thing I like about saving things in these format formats or in this format is I don't have to retype everything multiple times. I'll just delete the data acquisition mag and uh, this would be the uh, third grid in a box labeled cast 10, uh, the first grid square, and then the first whole uh, image from that selection. And then finally I'll save an image of the grid square uh, so I get an idea of what, you know, a particular uh, hole in a particular grid square might look like.
Okay. Yep. It's a little harder to do on a remote desktop, but I'll save that. And that is the entire process of screening, really. So the next thing I'll do is move to a different grid square. Uh, usually, you would want to get an idea of what different parts of the grid look like. So, you know, next I might move to the other side of the grid. Um, if it, this grid isn't it isn't very variable, but if the grid squares were of different sizes, then I might choose different sizes of the screen. Um, and uh, and so on. So I'm just going to move over there and I will just start the process over again. So now I'll go to the preparation tab and collect on a grid square and repeat the process. So that's it.